something borrowed, something blue. Give us all your juicy news, sensational, irrational. It's Wedding Confessionals. Welcome to another episode of Wedding Confessionals. I'm Brooke. And I'm Pam. And the only thing we love more than weddings is talking shit about weddings. You know what you love more than talking shit about weddings? (laughs) What's that? Apparently the slush that you drank today. (laughs) Uh, I do love the slush. I want to introduce our <laughs> guest, who was so nice to bring a bottle of champagne. I know to yes. the recording. Shout out, Pammy! Please introduce our guest. Yes, um, this is the co-host of the podcast, First Timers, and um, it is my friend Angie Greenup. Hi. Hey. Hi. Thanks for having me here in this lovely recording studio. Yes, the guest bedroom. Awesome. It is cold as. F though. I'll Do be you honest. want a hoodie? I got a blanket. Ooh, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm awesome. always cold. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, I just, I just, you know, I warm. I was like, I'm driving to the valley. I gotta wear my t-shirt and shorts because the valley is hot. The thing is, I, you know what? We'll get into your topic in a second, Pam. I thought we were gonna s- no pass it. We're not gonna Damn skip it. it. What your slushy? <laughs> but no, we have. I need that recipe, girl. Yeah, we're getting back to that. <laughs> but uh, the reason why the room's so cold right now is that if it was just me sitting in the thermostat, it's always at like seventy three or seventy four for uh, during the summer that's like my internal ac i feel like that's reasonable sweaty magoo who i live with it has to be at like 68 oh that what? is cold and it is guys on and t- expensive oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> on top of having to wear a damn hoodie in august right? the bill that comes in is atrocious and i think it's because i'm the one that you know you divide and conquer in marriage and you, you know he's really great about taking care of certain things and i automatically just like absorbed bills because I like controlling money. Let's be real. Yeah, I'm the same way. Mm-hmm. And also, like, when we first moved in together, it was already my apartment. So I think we were in my name. I lived in L.A. first. Like, it kind of naturally happened. But I think I just genuinely would, our personalities. You'd do I it would, anyway. Yeah, I would do it anyway. But I think if he had to see that damn bill every month, <laughs> the thermostat would be set a little differently. <laughs> it's just not necessary to to be indoors at that temperature at in any season. That's I mean, cold. He does run hot, though. I'll get, it's, it's real. But yeah, because of it, Pam has to have a plan. Blanket for the podcast. It's I'm always sorry here. I have your blanket. Do you it's need okay. another one? No, I'm okay right now. Are you still feeling warm and hot I'm from a little the other topic we want to <laughs> yes. talk about? Pam, <laughs> when we started tonight, Pam popped in and I was like, yo, Angie brought champagne. Do you want some? And what did you say? I said no, but I still had two glasses. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> but why did you say no? It's because you took a nap before coming over here i did what was the reason behind the nap because i was swimming in the pool all day no <laughs> we don't tell lies being on in this the podcast. sun and That's swimming not, is tiring but that is not a lie you had too much of your po- your bridal break from last year yes your little slushy the yeah summer slushy the summer slushy scotty's summer some i can't even say it Jesus scotty's Christ, summer Pam. slushy <laughs> That's hard to say try it what is it? Why Scotty's is it Scotty? Did he invent it? Is my brother. Okay. Yeah. Scotty, Scotty Summer, Summer slushy. slushy. Scotty Summer Slushy. We all can handle it. Pam. Yeah, we're Damn sober. <laughs> <laughs> so Pammy had too much of her bridal break from last summer. <laughs> I took a nap. I'm here. I'm ready. I'm proud of you. Showing up like a professional. <laughs> Absolutely. Hungover on a Sunday. <laughs> like I'm, you do. I'm just really... That just... I'm just jealous of your day. I mean, I was at like a kid's birthday party and there was alcohol there, but... The summer slushy thing sounds like next level. It's so good. Yeah, it's bring so it to the good. next kid's birthday party. Yeah, I totally. W- yeah, all the kids will have the time of their life. Well, the kids, we call it the adult slushy, and they get all bummed. They're like, oh, we can't have them. Like, no. Do you make <laughs> no, one you for can. them, like a virgin version? They have a, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you, or, you make know, it a different cream. color so you don't mess it up and give them the wrong one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I should. <laughs> that would be the smart thing to do. Oh God, it's like a sitcom waiting to happen. You're like, right. uh oh. <laughs> Um, also, I'd like to point out that we took photos earlier for Instagram, and Angie's still wearing still the tiara. Yes. Oh, I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know. Oh, that's funny. You're our little princess. The only cute thing on me today. I showed up to this podcast looking like super garbagey, and then they're like, "Oh, p- photo shoot time!" And I was like, uh, <laughs> "That wasn't in the prep email, guys." I never Thanks. put it in the prep email. You should. Yeah. No, because then people will be like, "I don't want to do photos." What? Yep. You know people will try to get out of it, but if you pressure them I in person... I just would have preferred to look cuter. <laughs> you look adorable. <laughs> You're perfect. Ugh, perfect well, in every you. way. Thanks. 
<laughs> um, so let's get into wedding shit. Now that yeah. we talked about Pam being a drunk. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's usually me. It's your turn. All right. <laughs> So um, the way that wedding confessionals works for anyone who's a new listener is um, listeners submit their confessionals. Sometimes they're questions, sometimes they're rants, Rants, sometimes they're hilarious stories from the past. We love them all. But they're always anonymous, which is super fun. We always have a guest over to chat about them and give their advice or give their insight into the confessionals and see what they think. Mm -hmm. But before we do the confessionals, we like to talk to our guests for a bit get inside their head and find out their personal history with weddings to understand your point of view when you're giving your advice specifically. So the first question we ask every person that comes on the podcast is how old were you when you went to your first wedding? Oh, my first wedding, I was, I was going to, I'm going to say third grade. I just remember being in like third grade. It was like my aunt's wedding and I was a, um, I was a junior. Oh, no, wait. No, I had one before that. My uncle's wedding was when I was a flower girl. I was a flower girl, my uncle's wedding, Uh even younger, maybe first grade-ish. So that was my very first. So I had two like childhood family weddings. You were allowed to weddings when you were a little kid. Yes. Okay. How big is your family? Wait, where are you from? I'm from um, Michigan. Oh, okay. Cool. Suburbs of Detroit. Um, Yeah, my mom, I I, I guess I did have a decent, you know, both my parents have a decent amount of siblings. Um, so I went to, I went to kids, kid weddings, a decent amount actually, but my family doesn't drink as much as like weddings that I now go to and like my friends do. So it's (laughs) like an interesting, like, I don't remember alcohol being such a big part of weddings growing up. And now I'm like, did we even have alcohol at my childhood weddings? I don't even know. Who knows? Well, didn't you went, mm. when you had like barbecues as a kid, did your parents like have beer and wine and wine coolers? No, my parents do not drink at all. Oh, okay. Yeah, they might have served it to other people, but I don't, I don't have any memories of alcohol being around really. So you drink as an adult. Yes. When did you get into drinking? Did you feel like it was weird? Like you were like a sinner? No. What? Where are you going? (laughs) No, but sometimes there's like a lot of like cultural pressure when like the rest of your family is sober and then you're going into college or like you move on to a certain point in your life where people are drinking and you're like, I didn't grow up around this. This is like a culture shock. That's yeah, a no, real I thing. didn't. I didn't feel that. I felt more. I'm sort of like a a rule follower, and so the yeah. idea of getting caught drinking under the age of 21 really scared me. So I didn't drink a lot at all until I literally turned 21. Like wow. I was like in college, mm. I would like drink once in a while, but like I just would get so nervous about getting like a a minor in possession ticket or whatever it was. Oh, I was terrified as if I would be like if I were actually to be arrested as drinking as a minor I genuinely thought that like no one would hire me as an adult yeah like I thought it would ruin the rest of my life and now as an adult it's like lol (laughs) right I wouldn't even give a shit nor would anybody (laughs) know like right find out no right but I really thought it was a big deal Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, like the propaganda worked on me. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I mean, I still drank, but I definitely was just like, <laughs> what was about a the car drunk? Yeah. A paranoid drunk? <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely. So did you go to a lot of weddings when you were like in high school or was it more as you got a little older? Um, It didn't. The wedding, I feel like really wedding season picked up in my late 20s. I feel like most of my friends, mm-hmm. the earlier ones were late 20s. And then early 30s was like five to six a year. Yeah. So that's when my friend group really started to turn up the weddings. Well, wait. So you grew up in Mich- or in, outside of Detroit in Michigan. Yeah. And then did you move from there to L.A.? Yes. Okay. When did you move to L.A.? In 2003, just like right after graduating college. Okay. So mm-hmm. you were pretty young. So most of your like adult friends went to college or are living in big cities like either Detroit or Los Angeles. Yeah. Most of, most of the friends that I've stayed in touch with moved away from our hometown and didn't get married till later. Like I went to maybe like one or two friends weddings like in our early 20s and that was it and everybody else really like was doing the career path first Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah I didn't have a lot of those friends like I know a lot of people are like oh yeah I went to a bunch of like high school friend weddings at like 23 and I'm like I didn't have that yeah I went to like one yeah and that was it and even that they got divorced so it's like (laughs) you know what I mean like it's like the one kid that got married super early right it like didn't work but yeah I'm the same way where it's like no one got married until Like their late 20s, early 30s. Yeah, that seems to be the norm in big cities, I feel like. And it also feels like it's the norm of this generation. Yeah. Whereas like our parents, everybody got married in their early 20s. Well, I just saw an interesting study that the average age of of a woman when she gets married has jumped from 1980, I think it was like 1980, 
it was 22 and now it's 26. And that's a giant jump for that. I mean, like, it doesn't sound like that big of a jump, but it really is. Yeah. And then if you take the average in large cities, it's even older. So it's just like an interesting how it's yeah. gone. And I wonder if it's, I always think, is it going to go back? Like, I feel like history and things are always cycles. Is well, they say a lot of it is it economics of like, what can you afford to do? And a lot of people hold off on getting married because it is ex- an, an expense now because culturally, you know, a generation ago, weddings were, you know, a thousand dollars. It was this small affair. It wasn't this big thing where now when you think of your own wedding, especially people that have expectations, it's an investment. And if yeah. your family mm-hmm. doesn't have, and if you want to save, people are like saving to get engaged. <laughs> like a generation ago, that wasn't a fucking thing. No, Our you got married in like the church and you had your like wedding at the local hall. Right. Exactly. I think like yeah. between, between proposal and wedding, it's probably like four months, maybe. So when did that turn? I think when did like it like get the crazy? The 90s? Maybe? Know, maybe. Yes. I blame everything think? on the 90s. <laughs> right? When do you I think? I, I'll have to look into this. Yeah. But yeah, it does feel like culturally, it's kind of wild that now it's like everybody waits. And even like I have friends that are younger than me that I'm like palling around with that are in their like mid 20s. And I'll, I mean, they know I have this podcast. I'm like, yeah, are you? and not like pressuring them, but like the ones that are in relationships. Are you guys talking about getting married? And they're like, no, like we're way too young. Yeah, interesting. Nice. Yeah, it's just it's interesting actually culturally. Nice to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You are I, too young. That's how I always felt. I knew I was going to turn 30 before I got married. And I knew that from like ver- a very young. Well, my parents are divorced. And I feel like that played, to me, part of the reason they got divorced, they got married really young. And so I was mm-hmm. like, I'm not going to make that mistake. And so I had like tunnel vision, like must turn 30 before you get married. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, like I, I had to check that off before I could get married. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of got to be cultural where it's a lot of products of divorce where people are a little more wary of it. And also yeah. I just mm-hmm. think like there's not the social pressure. Whereas like imagine 20 years ago, yeah, you were a fucking weirdo if you were 28 and single. I know, it's crazy. Especially as a girl. I know. And now it's like, that's completely normal. Right. As it should be. Because you know, live your life girls. Thank goodness we're in this generation. So now we're going to dive into, (laughs) are you talking about, wait a minute, we didn't talk about, were you ever a bridesmaid? Yes, but not that many times actually. Um, I was a bridesmaid once and a maid of honor once. And then one of my other best friends that I would have been in her wedding eloped. So, and that would have been like my main three closest girlfriends, I feel like. And I still have a couple single girlfriends that were in my wedding that are still not married. So I don't know if I have any left, but I can't really even imagine where um, did your friend where did she elope? Do you remember? I feel like it was Bali. Oh, that's oh, cool. Maybe. Nice. Yeah. She's like a world traveler, so I can't keep up with where she's been and where she got <laughs> and where she got married. I was like, Bali, Belize. It was one of the B's. <laughs> right. <laughs> totally. I think it was Belize now that I'd say it. Yeah, I had a friend that had like a quick wedding because she was in the military. And in my brain, because she talked about doing a Vegas wedding, I'm like, yeah, she got married in Vegas. What's like, she's like, no, man, I got married in Germany. And I'm like, I don't even know, man. <laughs> I wasn't there, so I made right? up a locale. Like, how am I supposed to remember? You, you made didn't it invite up. me. You didn't invite anybody. I can't remember your anniversary. I'm just going to make up a location. I was like, my wedding for you was a very exciting. <laughs> she's like, no, I just want to like my day off. Like, calm down. <laughs> right. I was in Germany at the time. Um, and so wait, so um, did you like being a bridesmaid or a maid of honor? It was fine. Yeah. I mean, the people that I, the two weddings I stood up in are people I'm super close to. And I was like happy to be a part of the day. And they were mm-hmm. both chill brides. Neither of them were crazy at all. So it was like very, it didn't really need a lot from me except to bring the fun. Well, that's oh, exciting for nice. you, but really boring for this podcast. I wanted <laughs> I'm sorry. Ju- oh, I've got no <laughs> juice. Oh, I did have. Well, okay. So the friend of mine who I was the maid of honor, um, she got married in Mexico. And there's just like a lot of things, I think, just lost in translation, even though she speaks de- decent Spanish. I think just things just got over. When you're planning a destination wedding, things get right. Mm-hmm. So literally the DJ comes up to me like two minutes before the reception. He's like, I need the first dance song, the father daughter song. I was like, what? How do you not have any of this? The what? <laughs> The receipt, like cocktail hour is currently happening. So I'd like go to the bride and be like, what's your father? Like, what are you, what are you dancing with your dad? And she was like, uh, I don't know. She calls her dad over like, she just had him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she made it up right there. She was just like, dad, what, did, what should we do? Like, it was kind of funny. It just goes to show you how like, not really that important those things are when you are planning a wedding. It feels yes. so important. But you're like, it doesn't really matter in the end. Nobody knows that you yeah. just made that decision five minutes ago. I'm like, that sounds good. And the DJ's been doing like a million weddings. <laughs> yes. He's like, whatever, put on this song. Everyone will cry. You'll be fine. Yeah, right. <laughs> he knows. 
That's a, that's a good professional. I think he found you. And he's like, he didn't go to the bride. He's like, you. And the dress yeah. matches everybody else. I know. that was That's how you know that guy yeah. knows what he's yeah. doing. That's a good mm-hmm. tip. He can't go to the bride. No. No. Because that's just Never. tears. So you were a bride. Yes. Let's get into <laughs> it. Okay. Well, first of all, what's your husband's name? Sam. Okay. How did you guys meet? We met playing kickball. Like we both played on a kickball league in Venice. As adults. As as grown ups, okay. yes. It was an adult <laughs> kickball league. I, I used to say adult kickball league and it made it sound sort of somewhat pornographic for some reason. Like adult <laughs> kickball. Like adult Kayla. Like, no, it was just adults playing kickball. <laughs> just like topless. Like what does that mean? <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, we were I was twenty seven or twenty eight when I met him, twenty seven ish. Um, what was it about him that you were like, okay? He was so smart and so funny. I mean, like off the bat, just like very had me laughing immediately. And he's cute. And um, yeah, that's why I instantly was into him. Was he good at kickball? Yes. I, on the other hand, <laughs> terrible. <laughs> I'm terrible at kickball. Did you keep kickballing or did you give up? I kept I kept going a little bit. He went even longer. But I it was funny because we joined the kickball league so that my roommate at the time could meet guys and she met no one and I met my husband. Oh no. <laughs> she was like, are you effing kidding me right, right? now? Like you <laughs> didn't need to meet. Like she was having trouble meeting guys because she was like a had a real professional job. She's a district attorney. So she's like wasn't meeting guys at work and anyway, it was really funny. Aw. Yeah, we had a rough start to our relationship in that after like a month of dating him, I felt like it wasn't working and I ended things and I didn't know this, but like when I, he had that moment of like the minute he met me, he was like, Oh my God, I'm going to marry this girl. He had that moment and I didn't have that moment back. I had the like, Oh, this guy's so funny. So smart. Like I'm real, I'm into him. Yeah. But after a month I was like, I don't know. And I was still kind of hung up on an ex. Like couldn't stop thinking about this last guy that I dated. Mm -hmm. So I ended things and I didn't know when I ended things like it like crushed him because he really thought that like I was the greatest woman he'd ever met. He was going to marry me. I'm like he he has said this before. I'm not like blowing smoke up my ass. And <laughs> I so, mean, you're pretty fabulous. Oh, well, Angie. thank you. And so <laughs> terrible kickball player. <laughs> terrible kickball. <player. laughs> Wonderful woman. <laughs> Can yes. still get a man being bad at kickball, ladies. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but I like a month after I had like ended things, I was like, I think I really messed up like. Sam was so amazing. I miss hanging out with him so much. Like, we hung out a lot. We lived, like, blocks from each other in Venice. So it was, like, really convenient in L.A. You know, like, like how close you live to somebody can really end or make a relationship. When I was younger and living in Brooklyn, I dated a guy for probably three months longer than I would because he was, like, two blocks away. (laughs) And I was like, well, it's so easy. (laughs) I don't want to get on the train. Exactly. (laughs) I was like, I can walk to his house. Um, That was a perk. Yeah, definitely. Totally. Yeah. So anyway, I basically came crawling back and was (gasps) like, I'm not sure you'd give me a second chance, but I feel like, you know, I kind of just was really honest with him. I was like, I wasn't feeling it. I was hung up on this ex and I really had a lot of time to think about it in the last month. And I just miss hanging out with you. And I think we could give this another try, blah, blah, blah. And he luckily had like a really close girlfriend who really liked me immediately, like another kickball girl who now she's like one of my best friends. And she sort of was like, I think you should give her another chance. And he did. And Aww. it clearly worked out as we have a child together. So we're yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shout out to that friend. Yeah. yeah. Was she Shout out at, Molly. Was she good at kickball? Better than me. <laughs> <laughs> the bar was pretty low with me. <laughs> so what's the time between you crawling back and asking for a second chance and um, you guys talking about like getting married? I would say it's it, not very long. Like once we started really dating, it was pretty obvious that he, he like we were serious. So maybe like, I remember we said I love you to each other. Like, so that was like February 2009 was the crawling back. And then like May of that year is when we said I love you to each other. And I like just knew and we started talking about the future pretty early on. But it actually took a lot. Like we dated for a long time before we got engaged. How long? Hmm. Two and a half years. Oh, how was the proposal? Did he propose to you or to you to him? (laughs) He said, if you had any women proposed to men, I would love yeah. to hear those. I haven't heard those episodes. I we, gotta listen. Yeah, and we've had like a, a a person that had a confessional where she wanted to propose and she was feeling weird about it. And yeah. we we're like, fucking oh, do it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, why not? I love that. 
No, he proposed to me. Um, we were like wine tasting up in like Los Olivos and um, mm-hmm. what's the other cute little town up there? Solvang. So we stayed in Solvang, <laughs> but there's Los Olivos. We don't, don't drink wine at all. <laughs> no, we don't know this place. So we'd been like wine tasting all day and then we were walking back to our hotel and we stopped in this cute little gazebo in a park and he proposed. Aww, and oh my God. Just like had a really heartfelt like proposal to me. Was it planned? Was like, it the Hans Christian Andersen Park within Solvang? I think so. Is that the... Oh there's only gosh. like one yeah, little park with one a gazebo. gazebo. Listen, yep. I go wine tasting more yeah, than I'd yeah. like to admit. That cute little park with the cute little gazebo. It's beautiful. And it was around Christmas time, so it was all lit up with lights. <gasps> Christmas Aww. in Solvang the best. I know. It was oh, cute. The last time I went, they were doing some fucking 10K, 5K, and the whole thing was covered and like fenced out for the people that were Aww. doing... No, good for them, because they <laughs> ran a race and I didn't. Like, you know they'd exercised and but i remember being kind of bummed because it's like i wanted to go to the park but it was all partitioned off for the runners anyway less about me more about you <laughs> that and park your proposal. is very cute it's beautiful but i will what say a great so great place to get engaged yeah i yeah. love I, it was perfect although he did tell me afterwards so for that was like right after christmas for christmas a, fr- a bunch of friends and i and him and he and some of his friends we all went to vegas for christmas we just thought it'd be really fun to get a hotel room and do like Holy christmas in vegas shit. i've done that before that? it was so what? fun i loved it i thought it was hilarious it's different yeah but it is kind of sad also yeah <laughs> It's, so, it's, just like it's the, different. A weird combination of yeah. Like, I went drinking in New York City on Christmas Eve once, and it was the funnest and also darkest night of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so I can kind of relate. So Christmas in Vegas. Yeah, and so my husband's Jewish. I've actually converted now. Um, prior to getting married, that's a whole nother story. I won't get into. But so to him, like it wasn't it. And a couple of his Jewish friends came, and they were like, "Whatever." But like a couple of us were like, it's "Kind of sad," you know. But it, we still had fun. But he had said. Part of me wanted to propose on the Southwest flight to this, to Vegas, because all of our friends are on the flight. And he thought he knew I would see the humor in it. Like, it wouldn't be him seriously proposing on a Southwest flight. Like, I'm so into the humor of it and the story that I actually would have been like, this is the greatest and funniest (laughs) proposal ever. I love you. But he's like, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't for the rest of my life be like, I propose on a Southwest flight. Like I needed it to be intimate <laughs> and just me and you. Aww. And I was like, I respect that. But man, it would have been, been so funny. funny. <laughs> <laughs> Most <laughs> girls would have been like mortified by that idea. I was like, that would have been awesome. <laughs> there, I will say as a person that flies on planes, please propose on a plane. It <laughs> yeah, would make it my day. I know. I would emote. I would e- weep immediately i would buy you wine but then you'd also be like did that guy really just propose to his girlfriend on a flight to vegas you would kind of have that thought which is why i thought it would be funny because people have that <laughs> i would just assume if he did that that they were literally going to get married in vegas like an hour oh, later yeah which yeah I also i'm just like go for it <laughs> And can we have you on our podcast after? <laughs> Here's my card. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> can I come? <laughs> oh my god! And then talk shit about. If yes. I was on a plane. I would go. I would go to that wedding. Oh, I that would. would have, yeah, I would you gotta insist. get to that wedding. <laughs> I'd be like, "May I join you? May yes. I be your witness?" <laughs> no, I, I'd be. I'm going to be your witness. <gasps> Not even a question. <laughs> no, you have to insist. <laughs> <laughs> done so but he did it before that vegas trip no just after after yeah but the whole time he like knew he was proposing to you yes oh that's sweet. he had the ring for like six months before he proposed what oh my goodness yes, i know isn't that crazy that's a long time for yeah. burning a hole in i guess a drawer yeah it was just sitting in his desk drawer just waiting for the moment that was perfect i guess jeez i don't know wow mm. So you get engaged in Solvang in the gazebo of the Hans yes. Christens Anderson Park. <laughs> I love that you know the name of the park. And I was like, oh, this cute little park. It's Off like- of Mission Drive. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Copenhagen Avenue. Go there and propose. Right, it is right. adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I can ping it on my GPS. But so after that, how much time between the proposal and the actual wedding? A year and a half. Really? Yeah. Because we, um, he, he proposed in December and I really wanted to do like an early summer wedding and I did not want to do a six month wedding. So sure. I was yeah, like, that's well, we're, then we're doing a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Where did you guys want to get married in LA? Um, we wanted like a mini destination, like a small destination for local friends, but it actually turned out to be a giant destination for anyone else because we ended up doing it near San Luis Obispo. So everyone had to fly and then drive. But 
our kind of goal was to keep the wedding small. And so I feel like we decided to do something that was kind of harder to get to, Mm -hmm. to keep our numbers small. And it worked. Like we had 100 people at our wedding. And that's like, to me, that was the ideal amount that I wanted. We invited 200. But when you have a wedding that's hard to get to, people don't come. (laughs) <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. So you look generous knowing that those people aren't going to fucking come. Let's right. be real. That's real. Yeah. But you know what? Sometimes you do have a destination wedding and the people that show up, you're like, really? Yeah. You interesting. Still, right? You know, yeah. there's one or two people at your wedding that you're like, huh? Yeah. You made the trip. Yes. You can think of them in your mind. You don't have to say their names, but right? No, I can think of them. Because I had a destination wedding and there's a couple of people where I'm like, huh, that was a journey. Yeah, didn't see that coming. <laughs> You're actually kind of B-list, to be honest. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Yep. What, where did you get married? On this really old ranch called um, Santa Margarita Ranch. It's just this beautiful old ranch just outside of San Luis Obispo with like a hundred year old barn that the like reception was in like this beautiful stone actually an episode of the bachelor was on the ranch one time love it yeah they did a date there before or after you got married there it was i didn't know i actually don't watch the bachelor i watch plenty of shitty reality tv but the bachelors are good reality tv however you want to look at it um (laughs) but the wedding people at the venue were like we're actually going to be on an episode of the bachelor this week the the, you know the barn and the whatever the For ranch most is brides, that's like a hook and you were like i don't care <laughs> yeah, i was like does that make it more expensive <laughs> <laughs> right. how did you find this place just searching wedding venues yeah we like i wanted to get married in santa barbara but everything there was much more expensive than going even a little further north it just mm-hmm. gets cheaper and cheaper i guess yeah, yeah the so. further from okay. it's it, it's one of those things where i'm sure it gets cheaper the further you get to la but then the closer you get to san francisco the price goes up again right because yeah. I like when I look to vacation places, but yeah, San Luis Obispo. It's slow. an adorable town too. Yeah. It's like a mini Santa Barbara. I love it. I love it up there. It's so cute. Yeah, I um, cute. I tried to. I almost planned a vacation there, but ended up going a little bit more north. But yeah, there's a college there. What a great yeah. place to go! I to know. College. That's what we kept saying. We're like, this would have been such a fun little place, and it's close to the beach still. And right. Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, damn, if I could do it again, I would totally go to slow you. Yeah. Slow you. <laughs> is that what is it? San Luis Obispo. Is that the name I of think the it's Cal State. Cal State. Oh, State. Cal State. No, uh, I, think, I think you're right. I think it's UC. We're terrible. Let's put yeah. in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, I just it has nothing to do with weddings, but I'm just curious. So you don't like The Bachelor. What is your favorite trashy TV? <sighs> Big Brother. <gasps> I watch oh. Big Brother still. Oh, I and have I, two best friends that are obsessed with really? Big Brother. Really? Because I have a hard time meeting people who still watch Big Brother. And they... <laughs> know to text without me on it but every once in a while we'll forget and accidentally be on a text (laughs) thread with me and type something in that makes zero sense to me (laughs) i watched like once and there was somebody like in a bunny suit but they're like having a serious conversation (laughs) and it's it's real if you get into that world because the people these two friends i'm talking about are very intelligent people yeah it is a mind game show totally but you have to be in i don't have the time how many hours it's a it's a big commitment it's it's (laughs) on three nights a week you guys oh my goodness but It's such a good multitasking show. I work like I watch it while doing work on my computer. I watch it while doing laundry. Like, I'm never just sitting watching the show. (laughs) I'm always doing something else. It's like two or three hours. It's like a long show. It's an hour three times a week. It's three (laughs) hours of my life. It's really the only show I watch. I also watch AGT, America's Got Talent, which I find very entertaining. (laughs) But um, those are like my two summer shows. That's all I watch in the summer is Big Brother and America's Got Talent. It's like my reality TV season. And then I don't really watch three reality tv the rest of the year no listen i love love what you love i'm a vanderpump <laughs> rules girl to the end so i'm never gonna judge she anyone is. i will watch vanderpump rules like it's my fucking job See, i've never gotten into reality shows that don't have like a competitive aspect for some reason i love a workplace drama oh okay yeah i like people that are forced <laughs> to work together because i know what that is and i'm like i i hear you i feel seen <laughs> It feels it feels real. <laughs> They're all mm-hmm. insane. Okay, so sorry. Back to the wedding. That's so okay. <laughs> you're in San Luis Obispo in this beautiful yes. ranch. Mm-hmm. 100 people. You invited 200. Um, how do you have like a bridal party? Yes, I had five, but my husband had eight, and I was cool. Diva. I was fine. Whoa. Yeah, I was fine with mismatching. I was like, I'm not bringing three more girls in that don't feel like, like close randos. friends to be in my wedding. Yeah. Um. 
And did you, yeah. have, did you have a bachelorette party? I did. Where did you go? Really... Did you go to Vegas? No. So my brother lives in Miami and works in Miami nightlife and basically was like my second maid of honor. <laughs> so my maid of honor Aww. was like, your brother's basically taking over the planning of your bachelorette party. Is there anything else you need me to do? And I was like, no, he'll take care of everything. We didn't pay for anything. <gasps> Restaurants, tasting menus from chefs because he knows so many people yeah. and has hooked so many people up with his job. Sure. Yeah. Like we were VIP everywhere, bottle service, free champagne everywhere. It was like, and a lot Amazing. of my friends who don't go to clubs, very like, and I don't go clubbing anymore. I used to in my earlier days, but... Like they were like, I would never go clubbing on a random Saturday, but this was like the funnest night at a club ever. When you're like treated like that, you're like, yeah. I could do this every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a good bachelorette party, but it was night. It was small. There were like eight of us, so it wasn't like super crazy. But you flew to Miami. Yes, that's fun. Nice. Yeah, it was. A, it was super fun. I think it also just to compliment your brother. Like I think it says a lot about who your brother is because even if you're connected, if you're a dick, nobody does those kind of favors. Oh no, my he brother must be, like, is the like. Sweetest. he is he's super like everyone when i meet who knows my brother's like dude your brother's the, like he takes care of people it's like part of his work and like his yeah. vibe of like how he runs his life like i yeah. take care of you you take care of me one day like it all works out can we hang with this brother yeah he's actually yeah, yeah. in town right now visiting. what <laughs> <laughs> weirdly enough he's sitting at home right now with my with my husband what the fuck <laughs> should have brought him yeah. he's a good time he's like a 41 year old perma bachelor still parties three nights a week it's blackout drunk on the regular <laughs> We'll never get married. We'll never be on your podcast to talk about his wedding. Wait, but <laughs> you know he has it. wedding stories. Oh, yeah. Bachelorette, oh, bachelor yeah. stories. Oh, he's, he's gone to weddings where just, like, they straight up just pass around cocaine. These are the type of people that he goes to weddings. I mean, it's Miami. <laughs> that, right. Exactly. At least people from L.A. Who are we talking? But wait, so when he's in L.A., does he have L.A. people to hook up? Yeah. Have you gone to a club in the last week? No, he went out this weekend but i was like i'm not i you when he used to visit i'd go with him but not yeah, anymore. you're like, a mother I'm, yeah yeah i was like i got kids i'm too i gotta be up in the morning to parent i'm not going to a club <laughs> but he still goes out he sounds fun yeah very shout fun. out to your brother yeah if you guys are ever in miami any of you even you listeners like he's the sort of person you could just text and be like hey i heard your sister on a podcast <laughs> she said you work at live nightclub can i get in he'd be like yeah sure like live nightclub yeah it's like one of the biggest notes. nightclubs in the country it's huge <gasps> what we are way off topic sorry i'm excited i have a tendency hey, to go we're going out. we are ending up at live nightclub in I miami don't enjoy yes. humidity do you guys have any like bachelorette or 40th birthdays coming up for friends he will take care of you we have to make a trip Pam. yeah it's okay. so fun live yeah. por- podcast record at live before they open <laughs> <laughs> with like all the lights on you're like ew <laughs> right exactly have you ever been because i went once to this it is wedding related i went to a bachelorette party once in new york like years ago and it was at god i fucking don't remember the, i'm sure it doesn't exist anymore anyway but it was like a pretty popular club at the time and they did this thing where they did like a male review with like male dancers like total like kind of like knockoff chippendale shit Mm -hmm. yeah like before the club opened so it was like at eight o'clock it was way too early to have like dancers in your face yeah but we went and the girl that organized it like didn't really understand like what to do so we ended up like all the way in the back it was weird but after the what part of the thing package that she bought was after the like mail review thing was over we got into the club for free but the deal was you basically just couldn't leave the venue so there was this weird hour in between when like the mail review ended and the club opened where we were just like sitting with like all the lights on in this fucking club and it's like that's so weird this is dark <laughs> when like the waitresses are set because i cocktail waitress in yes. hollywood for years and oh, yeah like, we're just setting up on, around you and like not only that but like i remember seeing like girls like in ballet flats before they put on the oh, heels yeah. oh yeah oh, right like, they were like flip flops <laughs> like they're like i'm not i'm not gonna play k to you right not now. even just the heels i would show up in my sweats like we'd all show up in basically pajamas put on our like slutty dresses <laughs> and heels at in the bathroom yeah. and the second the last person's out the door of the club we're back in our pajamas like pajamas that's awesome like you just like sweatpants yeah. and a t-shirt no they were like the tiny dresses <laughs> but like uggs <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like wild but I remember being like i don't think i can do this for a living this is just too much for me oh but that's, man that's but lot. yeah but that being said yeah i'm in i want to go to a okay. club in miami you'll enjoy let's it. do this yeah pam all right okay. i'm in girls yeah. night girls night a very elaborate girls night yes. we're gonna fucking plane <laughs> in like, a w- girls weekend yeah like three girls week- time weekend, yes. zones later <laughs> 
So, okay. So back to your actual wedding. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I really go off topic. No. Hey, welcome to the show. <laughs> so you're in um, San Luis Obispo. Yes. Um, you have, is it just like a short wedding? Like, cause you said that your husband is Jewish. Did you yeah. do it? But you didn't grow up Jewish. So what did you do ceremony wise? Well, I had blending? converted. So you did at that point. Yes. So you I had converted a rabbi. before the wedding. Yes. Okay. Well, so here's the like main, th- the main theme of my wedding is that although temperatures normally at the end of June in that area are like in the low 70s because it's it's like well, not NorCal, but like it's central California kind of weather on the coast. It was record high temperatures, my wedding day, 109 degrees at the start of my outdoor ceremony. Gross. Whoa. What? 109 degrees and all of our guests were in direct sunlight. Oh, oh my god! On a whim that week before when I saw it, the forecast had called for like 95 and I was panicking about 95. So I went to like Chinatown and bought a bunch of those little like parasol umbrellas. The paper mm-hmm. ones? Yeah, because I was like, we, I need something because people are going to be in sunlight. And I only bought... I was like, I'll just buy 50 of them. So at least like the women are covered because I thought it was going to be 95 and like, oh, the, the older people and the women, whatever. Yeah. Meanwhile, I should have bought like 100. So yeah, it ended up being 109 degrees. Wait, who got the parasols? Did you pass them out to certain people? Well, no, just first come, first serve. They were just sitting <laughs> oh out there. Oh my gosh. Don't be late to <laughs> yeah, a wedding. <laughs> right? Seriously. Ugh. So, um, oh my gosh. It was awful. <laughs> it was, was miserable. Was the ceremony awful? I mean, one of my bridesmaids had to step off because she thought she was going to faint. So she didn't. I didn't know this. Wait, what time of day was the actual ceremony? 4 p.m. Oh, fuck. Oh, was, my like, gosh. The hottest, the hottest oh, day, time of day. Oh, my God. What yeah. was your dress? Like, what dress setup? Do you have sleeves? No, it was. Um, I I don't know if I, I'd say mermaid style, but it was like very fitted and then like a little bit looser at the bottom. So I guess that's mermaid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. Um, Strapless. Yeah, strapless, strapless, like strapless. sweetheart style. Um, you said that your veil was really dramatic. Yes, my veil was super long, like went down the dress and then some. Yeah. But that didn't add to my heat. I mean, like, yes, I yeah. felt like I was very hot. I was more, I was just way more concerned about everybody else. Yeah. Well, the I men like, in the I don't fucking even care suits. Hot. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't even think about it at the time. Like, I should have just told them to take their jackets off. Who cares? Like, take your, why are you wearing jackets outside it's 109 i wish i would have thought about that i felt people that are after. polite well also it is one of those things too where it's like i'm already sweating in this if i take it off it's even worse <laughs> right because so then you like, have the, right, pit the pain. Pain. yeah exactly <laughs> and honestly women we're so uncomfortable in our fucking shoes and bras and thongs let them be uncomfortable for 10 minutes right that's true oh You're my right. gosh i'll get off my feminist soapbox <laughs> no, <huh? laughs> so the ceremony would have been longer but the rabbi was like look it's so hot why don't we do the first part of the ceremony in this tiny little room that had a window air conditioned unit like on the ranch it was like just the room that the you know the bridal party did our last touches in Mm -hmm. yeah so we did like part of the ceremony there we were still all so sweaty because there was like you know 20 people jammed in this room to sign the ketubah and do something and then we did the wedding ceremony um and so that's smart of the the rabbi yeah i'm glad he thought of that because i would have just been like (laughs) <laughs> so unfortunately so this big barn when i had visited the venue twice prior to our wedding day the barn was freezing right because it's like this stone old barn so sure. it like whole like a cellar it almost. never gets yeah. warm yeah right. it never gets sun so i kept telling people like don't worry when you get into the barn it's like nice and cool in there or whatever well <gasps> apparently when you've had like a heat wave for the last five days Instead of it staying cold, it was hotter in the barn <laughs> oh, than outside the barn. No. And they had like giant fans blowing, but like it was, I mean. Oh my God. So it was really bad. So the, the start of the reception, you know, like we enter is like whatever the bridal party. And I was like, oh, no, I can't even breathe in here. It was terrible. <laughs> then some point like after the speeches, Sam and I are going around doing the like saying hi to every table. We look up and we see... One of our wedding guests, probably in her like early 60s, maybe mid 60s, start convulsing. <gasps> oh my God. Threw up on herself and then like <gasps> plopped onto the ground. Like basically had oh like a mini heat stroke. Oh shit. Luckily, she was seated at a table with my with Sam's friend who's a doctor, and then his uncle was at another table who's a doctor. So two doctors were very close by and attended to her, and she was fine. Oh my god. Oh my god. But like, as the wedding couple, seeing somebody get heat stroke at your wedding, I just looked at Sam and I said, This is a disaster. Like this wedding is a total disaster. This night's gonna be a disaster. Like I just Aww. concluded there that the night was gonna be a disaster. Yeah. Yeah. And it was awful. 
But I had planned at sunset for an ice cream truck to come in, an old school ice cream truck with like strawberry shortcake bars and ice cream sandwiches, choco tacos, like old school, not bougie at all. So the sun goes down, the the sun's starting to set. Everyone's told to go outside. The ice cream truck rolls up playing like didn't 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 and everybody like, <laughs> everybody applauded like it was you know like, like Jesus just walked in. celebrity ice right? cream truck. So once everybody got ice cream and the sunset, yeah. It, it took our wedding from like what could have been a massive disaster to that everybody got their second wind. It cooled down significantly outside and in the barn. And then we had like an awesome dance party and everybody got hammered and it was great. But oh, it was oh my real gosh. rocky God. for a while. Wow. That's an emotional journey. I know. Thank God for the ice cream. I know. I was like, I'm so glad I planned the ice cream at sunset. It was perfect. Well, it sounded like everyone, even when they were miserable, were pretty polite about it though. Yeah. my So my maid of honor, she's very direct, very like... She said to me afterwards, she told me, she goes, by the way, I just want you to know that before the wedding, I looked at all the bridesmaids and I go, whatever you do, do not fucking talk about how hot it is to Angie. She knows, do not say a word. So like none of my bridesmaids ever complained about how hot it was. That is the oh. best bitch to have yes, in like, your Yes, like she like pointed a finger at the face. She's like, nobody is allowed to complain they're hot in front of Angie. Say it before she walks in the room. It's fucking true. Yeah. Like, cause yeah, well, I knew it was yeah, hot. I'm aware. Yes. I'm right? fucking There's aware. nothing I can do about it. Yes. Yeah. And you're not oh helping God. by acknowledging it. Right. Oh, that is a good friend. Yes, oh, yeah. it she's is. She's awesome. So it was, I was very up. grateful. Wow. I love that she just put the fear of God in <laughs> Shut the fuck up. And she's like, we'll do that to people. She's intimidating. So but they're it's like, true. okay, okay, we won't say anything. But I like, but it's like, but it's out of love. It's right. like, I have exactly. to be stern right now so that you guys don't accidentally become assholes. assholes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So we lost that one, the one woman who had heat stroke, and it was. Um, well, you say you lost her. She came back. No, no, yeah, like she left. I, I met, yeah, we didn't lose her. We didn't have anyone die at her wedding. Um, she had to leave the wedding, but it was Sam, my husband's, like one of his best friends from childhood growing up. It was his mom. Like you know, it was like a really close family. Like, yeah. She was a close friend of the families, and so that friend had texted. During this, during the reception, Sam, like, I knew somehow my parents being at this wedding was going to ruin my fun, but I really didn't see it this level. Like, he had to drive (laughs) his mom back to the hotel in the middle of the wedding party. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, one of a a girl who was pregnant left, and my bridesmaid, like, was at the reception for 10 minutes. The one who thought she was going to faint up there. Apparently, I didn't know this, but she had, like, been throwing up all day long and, like, didn't tell me. No one told me. And Damn, she didn't make well. any of the reception. Oh. So, yeah. Heat, man. Wow. Real ugly. You it's, just can't predict. Yeah, because it's not like a hurricane. Like, that kind of, like, when it is high-level heat, it's just this, like, silent killer of a situation where you can, it's not like rain or fire, you know? It is something that really changes what's going on, but it's you can't yeah. really visualize it. No, it's just you people can't really silently, seek shelter like, in a situation Right, like just people even. silently suffering. I didn't even bring up this part of my wedding. So the um, we got married on a Sunday. Thursday was the night we packed up, or Thursday was the day we packed up our cars to, like, drive up to San Luis Obispo, and my husband's parents were already there to help. And as we were loading the cars in this heat, I fainted. <gasps> what? And... Couldn't like, I apparently wasn't waking up quickly, so Sam called nine one one, and I finally woke up. The ambulance had come, so this is the Thursday before my wedding. I rode in an ambulance to UCLA Hospital. <laughs> oh my god! god. <laughs> I fainted in my own <laughs> driveway. Well, I was sitting in the car. Luckily, when I fainted, I had sat in the car and I looked at him and I was like, I feel like I'm going to faint right now. And then I just like, he said, my eyes rolled back into my head and like fainted sitting down. Wow. Oh my gosh. So that like kicked off the weekend. <laughs> Jesus, girl. You were here. You were in LA. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh my God. It was kind of crazy now that I think about it. <laughs> 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 the whole weekend was just kind of, oh, and also my divorced parents hadn't been in the same room since they basically got divorced until my wedding weekend. Oh my God. How'd that go? But that actually went great. Oh. Weirdly yeah. enough. Is it because your maid of honor yelled at them? Was like, do <laughs> yeah. not fucking bring up your marital shit in front of her. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been amazing. It's actually because You we- know, you never know. She might have done it, just never told you. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's so funny. Um, we had dogs in our wedding. We had our own dog. And then my both my mom and stepdad and my dad and stepmom are crazy dog people. So we're like, all right, family dogs allowed. They allow dogs at wedding. Fine. You're all the dogs are in the wedding. They're all going to walk down the aisle. It'll be funny. Yeah. So every event that we planned throughout the weekend is at a dog friendly like patio, a restaurant where the dogs could just come to everything. So the first night when we went out and the dogs were there and my mom and stepdad and my dad and stepmom all saw each other, they, the dogs were like the best buffer ever oh. so they just sat and like talked about how much they're obsessed over their dogs for like an hour and it warmed everybody up and before you know it my oh. mom and stepmom are cracking jokes with each other and i'm like didn't see this coming what <laughs> that's wow. awesome because that was like my number one anxiety about wedding planning was my i was like yeah. freaking out about my divorced parents being in the same room again yeah so anyone planning a wedding out there who feels that i feel you hard you need a buffer. Find a buffer. If if it's dogs, cool. Or find something else. Because children. Yeah. Or yes. The yes. The buffer was a big help. Wow. And now they're like, I mean, they don't like hang out. I mean, they live in opposite sides of the country. But, but whatever. They're grandparents to yeah. your kiddo. Yep. And like when one of the sets of parents is in town and the other one's also, it's like they cordially hang out i mean honestly wow. what else can you expect that's great you know. know what i mean just to like put your differences aside and be a grown-up and be there for your daughter that was awesome great. nice oh yeah. dogs man they're great Aww. i know they can even help 100 degree temperatures god the poor <laughs> the dogs not just like panting like, i know <laughs> i know I they, say, how they do doggos. they didn't do so well either oh. they were just like my stepdad just kept pouring water on their heads oh oh puppies yeah, you know Oh my God. Well, we need to get to the best and worst, but I, I think know. we know the worst. <laughs> <laughs> we, we always ask our guests, what is the best and worst part of planning the wedding from like the moment you got proposed to like the brunch afterwards or writing the invites? I'm guessing the worst would be the heat wave. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I would definitely <laughs> say the heat wave was the worst. But it's the thing that everybody remembers and like it's the ongoing joke like when we talk our anniversary like when I post every year an anniversary post on Instagram I get the like hottest day of my life like you know like yeah people yeah. came to, I got like messages after like just want to let you guys know despite how hot your wedding was it was one of the best weddings we've ever been to like I got oh, a lot yeah. of those out of nowhere emails from like friends and yeah. distant friends I was like okay like people still really thought it was fun and like our vows were super duper sincere and funny. And I think people enjoyed hearing us talk at our wedding. And I think we put on a good wedding despite that. That's cool. Aww. Yeah. Thanks. So what's what was the, the best? best? What is the best? <laughs> is there like best a moment? I think my I think Sam's vows that he wrote to me were probably Aww. the best, my favorite part of our wedding. Do you have a record of those? Like are they written down anywhere? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I have them saved on my computer and printed up somewhere and saved. But he made a lot of like references. So one of the ways we've like something we have in common that immediately was like, oh, my God, we love we both love 90s R&B music like Boys to oh, Men. Oh, hell yeah. Joe to see like that is our I just went to a concert last night with En Vogue, <gasps> Keith Sweat. Bell Biv DeVoe. Like, yes! oh my gosh. Yes. So my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so we bond and instantly over our love for that style of music. And he put a bunch of references that if you weren't paying attention and didn't really know, you wouldn't know it. Mm -hmm. But like he ended it with like, and like, again, a lot of people probably didn't even do it. Like he said something like, you're the most crazy, sexy, cool, which is a TLC, TLC album. album. Like, yeah. He put all of these references throughout the vows. That's and like, cool. I got them all immediately. And like a lot of my <laughs> friends who know, like might have, but like a lot of people probably just went right over their head. That's and cool. And it was still, will. I mean, he's a writer. He's a comedy writer. So they were well written and funny as well. But yeah, that I like, I definitely was crying and just was like, oh my God, those are the best words I've ever heard. <laughs> so Aww, nice. that's the best. Soon. That's cool. Did you have a lot of a 90s R&B at your wedding reception then? <sighs> well, it's not good dance music really, but we did have like, you know, Casey and Jojo all my life. Yeah. Like, I almost wanted that Baba, to be Baba, like our Baba. first dance, but I was like, are people going to be like, you guys just make a joke of everything. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't end up choosing it but i kind of wanted it <laughs> i once saw i went to a concert it was a bunch of r&b artists all at once it was the greek theater a couple years ago and casey and jojo performed and it's jojo that sings that part right that's like the littler guy right i don't even know but yeah. he 
while being while he was singing he was literally the bodyguard came out and carried him on his shoulders <laughs> and like carried him around while he sang what like a diva what? that's it was hilarious hilarious that's i was so like weird you are my yes. favorite weirdo ever that's so funny <laughs> It was really wild. Um, well, man, we know about your wedding now. Yeah, yeah. There's, I feel like I talked for three hours. Sorry. No. Oh, <laughs> or you're please. welcome, depending. Yeah, it was freaking fascinating. <laughs> I honestly, because we, we're here for. I personally, because you know, I've never met you before. And when you came over and we're chatting, I, you know, I go to my way not to talk about it since I want it to be, you know, just organic conversation on the podcast. Right. I had no fucking clue it was going to be so crazy. Dramatic, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Are you guys, I feel like we understand Angie's point of view when it comes to weddings now. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yes. I know her favorite taste in music, so I feel like we're ready to get into the confessionals. Let's do it. Okay, yeah. Pammy, do you want to go first? Yeah. Do it. All right. Dear wedding confessionals, me and my fiance have started the wedding plans, and there is one thing we know we both want at the wedding, booze. Yeah. <laughs> Both of us were in Greek life at our university and have always been known to be quite the life of the party. Our circle of friends make up a fine group of fraternity brothers and sorority. Sorority? That's sorority sisters. Have another slushing. Yeah. Still there. And everyone is expecting our wedding reception to be a really super fun party. Honestly, my fian my fiance and I want that too, but there's just one problem. My family is Southern Baptist and strictly disapproves of drinking alcohol. They know my fiance drinks, but they don't think I am a drinker and I know they would be upset at the wedding with drunk people and maybe um and maybe even being at a wedding with alcohol. I want my two sisters to be in my bridesmaids group, but they are some of my best friends, and but they are also very disapproving of drinking and would not be comfortable with attending any pre-wedding events where I could be seen drinking. Additionally, there's a lot of drunk stories and antidotes about my fiancé and, and I that are likely to come out during the wedding process, things I don't think my family would like to hear. I know I'm an adult, I'm paying for my own wedding, and I can make my own decisions, but I don't want to be the best day of my life to be hindered by my family's judgment. I want to be able to let loose and have fun and not to worry about disappointing anyone. What should I do? Sincerely, Boozy Baptist Bride. <laughs> hey, Southern gal. Yeah, yeah. I'm here for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tough one. Well, I will say, um, my uh, in-laws... We were talking about how your parents don't drink, right? Right. My in-laws were not drinkers either. So well, we neither are mine. Yeah. I oh, had two right. sets of. So, so and then on your side, everyone is okay with drinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it so much easier. Hey, no, no judgments. Linda came on. She was a blast. <laughs> she's, so, she's so fun. Her husband's uh, mom was on the show. Oh, she had nice. some wine beforehand. We had fun. Um, <laughs> but I mean, so we, so, you know, two out of the three people in the room understand sort of the scenario you're going through of yes. having to deal with some sort of family member situation where someone doesn't drink. Um, so I think that this is a two part question. Part one is, should I put my sisters in my wedding as my bridesmaid? Right? Okay. That's part one of the question. Part two is, should I have alcohol at my wedding? Those seem like two different questions, right? Okay. They're both, yeah. Right? But if she didn't have alcohol at her wedding, she wouldn't have to think about whether or the not sisters. she'd have her sisters. Okay. In, so. so I guess we start with the, the bigger picture of the wedding then, right? Should she have alcohol at her wedding? Just to answer the question, yes, yes. or no. Yes. Yeah? I agree. Yes. I mean, listen, here's the thing. I think when, mm, here's my kind of point of view, and I'm not, I'm not like judging you or anything, but I think that when we're younger and we're learning how to be adults away from our parents, we make decisions and we don't already, we don't always tell them about all the things that we do. We don't tell them about sure. guys that we date, that we don't end up dating long term. We don't talk about wild night out. We don't talk about, you know, mistakes we made or just like anecdotes that you don't want to share with everyone. That's completely normal. Yeah. That's compartmentalizing your life. You don't need to share every part of your life with every person you meet. That's like you don't bust into your boss's office and you're like, let me tell you about how I got drunk on Saturday. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's pretty normal. Normal. But now you have reached this point into adulthood where if you've been omitting or lying for X number of years, these things are coming out as a shock. 
but your parents aren't stupid. You know, I can't, I have a hard time believing they don't think you've ever had a drink, right? I agree, but I don't think my parents have any clue of like the sort of partying my dad does because he's married to someone who loves to party. And so I'm very open with them about it. But like my mom really, if I told her like how much I've gotten drunk in my life, she would sort of be floored. But here's the thing. How... How often are the stories of what this person's done in college going to come up on the actual wedding day? Like, who's the asshole that goes up to the mother of the bride and is like, let me tell you some horrible, crazy stories about your daughter vomiting? Yeah, I, I think it's that. more the sisters, like at a bachelorette yes. party or, yeah. you know, because things come out there. Yeah, um, I think that's maybe what she's more concerned about. Which brings us to question two. So we said question one, we answered which was. Yes. Yes. You should have alcohol sure. at your wedding. Also, if you're worried about your friends, I don't know how old you are, but it sounds like maybe you're in your late 20s because you graduated college, but you're still really tight with a lot of these people. Yeah. I would suggest wine and beer only, no liquor available at the, at the wedding. That's probably smart. Oh, see, I don't like I don't like no liquor at weddings. <laughs> I have very <laughs> strong feelings about that. Let's get into but it. You're yeah. right. But like, because... You think open bar or why bother? Yeah, I kind of do because I love, I love doing shots at weddings. I, I think that's what gets that. That's what makes people fun yeah. at weddings is hard liquor. But you could turn it off at a certain point. Like you could be like switch to beer. I don't know. Yeah. But I, I do get, I do get the beer and wine thing only. But I know I'm bummed when I go to a wedding and there's no hard like, liquor. Yeah, but that's fuck. maybe more personal because I just prefer You're it. like a shot. Yes. But maybe like, that's a happy medium instead of yes, having yes. no alcohol or going all the way, just, you know, having some, yeah, I agree. I think that's good advice. Beer and wine. Don't listen to me. <laughs> I think beer and wine is because there's only so crazy you can get on beer and wine and you'll still get yeah. drunk and you'll still have fun, like, but you're not going to be like yeah. my friends, vomiting in the corner. My friends that showed up to my wedding that were not like family are pretty good ragers and they're people that I genuinely like party with when I was in my 20s and in college. Like I feel you. I brought those friends to my wedding. I only had wine and beer. Only one person got shit faced. Everyone else remained appropriately you know, yeah. level. So that's sort of a, an idea. If you're genuinely worried about like the, I don't think it's so much the girls because probably, well, no, because they don't eat. So they get drunk early. <laughs> but you know, I think if you, but so we answered the question about that. We think you should have yeah. alcohol at some point. Like this is your life. This is your wedding. That's mm-hmm. the style that you want to bring. Yes. And I think also people are going to be some, oh no, well, they might be on their best behavior. Uh, before we go into the sisters and the bridesmaid thing, I also think that the people that want to leave early because things are getting a little rowdy would be the grandmas, the mothers. Mm -hmm. So they might just not stay till the end. And I don't think it's that noticeable. Like my mom didn't really notice that all of my friends were super drunk at our wedding. (laughs) Like she, it didn't like, there's too much going on for your family to notice all of that. That's true. Like if somebody's being like extra crazy, sure, but that might just be one person in the group. Like, but as far as her sisters go, she, I feel like she does have to tell them. Yes. Yeah. So should she have her sisters as bridesmaids? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Don't I think she just cut needs them to out. Come clean and tell tell them what she actually enjoys in her life. Yeah, I, I, I would say yeah. I think that there definitely I think would be fine at a bridal shower. But if you go to them and you're like, listen, for the bachelorette party, we're going to XYZ weekend. There is going to be drinking. We're going to be doing blah, blah, blah. If you don't feel comfortable coming or you don't think this is something that you're into, there's no hard feelings if you don't want to be involved. Yeah. Or put it maybe, on them. Make that, let them make yeah, the decision, not or you. Or you go and everybody gets hotel rooms and the two sisters have their own room and maybe they don't do the night activities. And they go to the brunch the next day. They go to the pool during the day. Like there's a way to incorporate friends and family that don't drink into your life. And it doesn't feel weird. Yeah. Right? Mm Mm-hmm. Like there have been plenty of times where you have, I mean, don't think you're the first person that's had this because on top of maybe having people that don't like for emotional or social or religious reasons don't drink, you have a friend that's pregnant. You have a friend that just had a baby and is nursing. Like this happens to a lot of women specifically where you have a friend that genuinely for physical reasons or medical reasons are not drinking. drinking. Yep. And it's all about being respectful of that and not, you know, as long as your friends know that, I mean, unless you're really friends with assholes, like who's really going to be like shoving a beer or a shot in this girl's face and being like, drink sister. 
if you know your sister doesn't drink and everyone's a grown up about it and doesn't make them feel like shit about it. I think she's just concerned about them even seeing her drink. Oh, right? It sounds it. like, yeah, that like sh- that they wouldn't even want to be around her when she's drinking. I mean, there are plenty of people that drink socially that don't get shit faced at their wedding personally. Like, honestly, there are plenty of people that just like are dealing with so much social, social stuff and are just oh, yeah, kind it's of hard to get drunk at your own wedding. I didn't get drunk at my wedding. I didn't either. Right. No, so either. I think that you don't have to worry. You can have a glass of champagne and cheers, but you are going to be kind of running around and it's going to be easy at your wedding. I think she's maybe more concerned about the bachelorette party or the shower or something like that. Yeah. Bachelorette party slash stories of the bachelorette party. Also, yep. you can just tell your friends to fucking not tell the weird, crazy stories to your sisters. Yeah. It's like not honestly, that hard. It, you, and that might minimize who you bring to your bachelorette party. Maybe your bachelorette party goes from 15 people to seven and you only bring the people that you would trust to, you know, keep your, you know, because who wants to tell somebody's sister or some story about them like doing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Again, I think that, I think that your friends are less assholes than they're giving them credit Yeah. For. Yeah. Just Hopefully. give every, just tell everybody up front yeah. what, the, what the situation is so that the sisters are prepared to see alcohol. Your friends are prepared to not be like, remember when you got so hammered, you threw up in my shoes or whatever the story is. Yeah. And it's all going to be just fine. I feel. I've also, <laughs> and this Uh-oh. might be, I don't want you to go this route, but I have had a person that's go this route where I was friends with somebody who got married that wanted to have a bachelorette party, but felt like felt the need to invite so many people to the bachelorette party. So she had like a bachelorette night in New York with like a dinner. And then we went out to a bar and then secretly she had a bachelorette weekend at the Jersey shore and it was a rager and it was like eight people. But the other, the real bachelorette party that most people know about was like 25. If you want to go that route, I would just call it a girl's weekend yeah you know what i mean you just went on a girls weekend with some friends yeah. one of them happened to bring some penis whistles and it is what it is yeah and a you have idea. a more tame dinner night out as your bachelorette party if you really feel yeah. the need to include your sisters and not completely omit them but i feel like there's not an all for nothing in any of this yeah agreed right like you can you you don't have to go all in on the wedding where everyone's fucking shot shot shots on the dance floor and it's like you know what i mean like no one yeah. needs to do body shots at your wedding no, that would be great. <laughs> but you know what I mean? You get to set the tone at your wedding. You yeah. have a lot of control over that. Yeah. I think I understand, you know, most of these people in group settings at frat parties, it is a different scene. Those same people can go to weddings and not be douchebags. And if they are douchebags, then like maybe reevaluate the people in your life. <laughs> but it's like you know like someone who's 19 and being a dummy versus someone who's 27 and going to their friend's wedding right and that being said hey if someone gets too drunk at your wedding it's not you it's someone else right. like someone exactly. else made a dumb decision that's not on you or a great decision <laughs> or a pending <laughs> a wonderful decision with funny regrets the next day but yeah i think it's okay to be yourself also you have to think about when we talk about long term where like every decision you make isn't so much about your wedding but about like your big picture life do you want to spend the rest of your life lying to your family about the fact that you like a glass of wine like really you're gonna be 40 years old with two children at christmas and you want a glass of wine and you can't really yeah, now's a good time. I feel like, like all the skeletons come out of the closet. It's time. For, <laughs> during Getting weddings. married is a very adult act. You're it allowed is. to be an adult. You're allowed to be... Make you adult de- choices. You get to decide what, you, mm-hmm. what definition of adult means to you. Yeah. And you don't have to like... Again, you don't have to like put it in your mom's face in an aggressive way. But like, it's fine. It's fine. You're going to be great. You're going to have alcohol at your wedding. It's going to be fun as hell. You're going to have fun. And your friends sound fun and cool, and they're not going to be mean to your sisters. Yeah. And put them in your wedding. Do it. Yes, please. God, that'd be awful if you didn't. I know. Over booze. That's not good. Yeah. Okay. Number two. Yeah. Hello, all, but mostly Ruth. Smiley face. (laughs) God damn it. Is she even in the room? No, No, she's she's like passed out in the (laughs) living room. So sorry. Um, I went to a wedding a couple weeks ago and now have more evidence for my personal hypothesis that weddings bring out the worst in people. (laughs) After we were like, everything will be fine. I know. (laughs) Um, story number one, don't listen to story number two. That's right. Turn this off. Bride's father, the bride's father decided two weeks before the wedding to call her and say if she doesn't rearrange her seating assignments so that he is at the head table with her, he is not coming. 
Compromise is reached by adding a small table in front of the head table so the bride and groom could sit with their parents while the bridesmaids slash groomsmen are behind them in a row at the head table. Cool. (laughs) Also, during the threatening phone call, father of the bride decided to tell her she was a disappointment to the family. Then, during the first dance, the father of the bride dragged a chair into the dance floor and sat down to get a very front row seat. Literally, who is this guy? Luckily, he lives on the opposite side of the country, so hopefully he isn't able to stress the new couple out too intensely for the rest of his life. Ugh. Love y'all and the show from Beware of Monster Father-in-Laws 2. Ooh, I-, I will say, as we're reading this, Ruth is crying at the door. So you get your wish. Ruth is in the story. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Ruth. Did you hear your name? Doot, doot, doot. Okay, take your time. Tip, Jesus. Tap, 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 I mean, tap, just tap. saunters into the room. Um, oh, man. Hi, Ruth. So he's a dick. What is his That's, deal? That seems like a real... That doesn't happen. I mean, if, that doesn't happen very often. That kind of... No. extreme behavior this sounds like someone who was doing this sort of thing beforehand yeah this is a nar- this is like narcissist yeah this same person has like a terrible birthday story from when she was eight right yeah, yeah. somebody can't handle the attention being on somebody else dragging the chair i know that's the gross. head table yeah who are you that's weird. they're the couple no so strange that's oh. very strange i'm always weirded out by parents of brides or grooms getting like too much attention at a wedding oh wait I, this is totally <laughs> off subject but i just remembered and i just have to say it real quickly my friend just texted me julie who's the co-host of my yeah first she's coming podcast, on soon she just texted me that she was at a wedding this weekend and the mother son like the groom danced with his mom yeah. to mm-hmm. eternal flame by the bangles gross what? right <laughs> right <laughs> who picked that song right How- what that's weird so that song is about a romantic relationship yes. yeah very clearly anyway she was like <laughs> i was so weirded out the whole time oh. yeah i, I thought just, that was funny i just had to quickly say that sorry i don't Back think to- i could have a poker face <laughs> no, right <laughs> like was everyone just looking around like what is happening yeah but i definitely think that we can um agree that this guy's the fucking worst yeah that's yeah. Like- He's I've had pretty terrible. <laughs> I have not heard. I haven't. Ha- I haven't been to many weddings where I've seen like things like that go down. No, like obvious problems. This this bride knew ahead of time that her dad was a head case. This yeah. came no surprise. Should have never. It been came invited. a surprise to you, but I promise you that bride was like, "Yep, this is my father." Textbook dad. <laughs> Ugh, I'm so sorry. Number three. Oh, this yeah. is mine. Okay. Dear Wedding Confessionals, you guys, I'm so annoyed. I'm getting married in a little over a year and have been planning for a year already. I just had to cut one of my bridesmaids who I had asked months ago. She and I are pretty good friends and we mostly chat during the day when work is slow and about bits of everything. So of course my wedding comes up from time to time, like not even weekly. Well, the other day when I asked her opinion on napkins, she snapped. She said that because she is a bridesmaid and not a maid of honor, it isn't her job to give opinions or even hear about the wedding. She says bridesmaids should be, shouldn't be expected to do anything until the wedding day. Let me clarify here. I had never actually asked her to physically do anything other than give an opinion once. I don't get it. Don't agree to be a bridesmaid if you have no interest in the wedding. From down a bridesmaid. Oof. Um, that's <laughs> jealousy. Dodged a bullet? I don't know. I feel like, yes, yes. But I, I feel like that friend is mm, just maybe jealous that she's maybe not in a relationship or she's not getting married and just hearing an ounce of somebody else getting married is too much. Yeah, that's a good theory. What's your theory? She's just a see you next Tuesday. <laughs> and why are you friends with this girl anyway? Yeah, look, well, here's the thing. If this is coming out of the left field and you feel like this is not this person's normal like mo and this is oh my gosh this is weird i should you know give it a break from it and then check in with her like if you're yeah, something worried else something about deeper them, might be going on in her life yes. right but if this is her overall attitude with everything then maybe it's for the i guess maybe what i hate is the, this is our big fear when we chat about this on this show in general is the idea of wedding drama bleeding into your life in general because you know the wedding ends and you still have to have these relationships with people like hopefully your relationships get stronger by going through these life events together and not worse but sometimes these events do kind of 
kind of uh what's this thing separate the the wheat from the chaff is that what it's called the you, you basically yes I you, know you're, where you're going. You're I get putting, your metaphor, even though yes. I don't know what it is. <laughs> exactly. Does that help with me moving my hand around, which is what I'm doing? And both of you are watching my hands like it's going to help. And I just keep <laughs> rising it higher and higher. <laughs> I'm going to look up this thing and put it in the show notes. But the idea being like sometimes high pressure situations do kind of put relationships to the test. Yeah. But a bridesmaid situation isn't to the t- This isn't a high level situation. No. So one, it could be this person had a bad day. Can you patch things up? Maybe. If this is like you were kind of on the fence to begin with, it's okay. I, I mean, ugh. yeah, I think you're right though. Out. If it's totally out of, if this behavior is totally out of left field, I think something might be going on in her life. If, yeah. But if this is like how she always is, then you knew that that was your friend. And yeah, because I, I will say if, mm. if if the other reason why you're you're writing us is to say, is it weird to ask that question of a bridesmaid? And the answer is no. No. Honestly, asking about a napkin question isn't weird to ask anyone. No, but I also think like she no one cares. That's the thing that like That's fair. If some if like a, if I was in a wedding and somebody's like, "Can I get your napkin opinion?" I'd be like, "Yeah, but you know no one cares." Right. Like, here's my napkin opinion, but I literally closed my eyes and pointed to one. But you're just bored. <laughs> if you're both have day jobs where you're bored and you're just texting each other True. dumb stuff and you're True. like, "Hey, help me pick like black or gold." And you're just like, "Black." And then it's over. <laughs> exactly. Like just answer the question. Yeah, say anything. Yeah. There is sort of a point of being a bridesmaid slash being a friend to anyone where you do placate someone's silliness from time to time. Yes. You know, not every topic your friend brings up to you is the most gripping thing you've ever heard of. But if it's their interest and you have an interest in that relationship, then you do just kind of care for a hot second. So I I hope you guys work it out. Or if she's a total jerk, I hope that you don't hold on to that baggage. (laughs) Although I I now I want to know what the napkin question is. (laughs) <laughs> no, well, I mean, just one of the things, though, with the friend is as she said that they're getting married in little over a year. So there's another year to come and they have been planning for a year. So this friend may also just be like, you've got to be over kidding. it. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. I, That's a I good missed those points. De- I heard the details, but I didn't think about that in this question. Yeah, she might just be done hearing yeah. about the fucking wedding. You know yeah, what? Maybe right. you ask a third party, another friend that's a bridesmaid, to be like, be honest with me. Am I bringing this up too much? Am I, you know, like, is this mm-hmm. too And the other thing that you have to know is that there are certain friends that are super into this kind of shit and un- others that just don't care. That's yes. true. And that doesn't make them that's, bad friends. Yep. That just means that maybe this isn't their their high point. Yeah, I had friends who weren't even standing up at my wedding who are just obsessed with weddings and they were the ones on my Pinterest page giving opinions, not my bridesmaids because a lot of my bridesmaids just aren't as into weddings. Yeah. You find those friends who are super into weddings and even if they're not in your wedding, like there are those women who just love it and will answer you. Yeah. You just described my <laughs> relationship with put, Yes. Yeah. Just put we weren't in Brooke on your Pinterest page. We weren't in each other's <laughs> weddings, but we were working with each other at the time. And it's yep. the same thing. Yeah. We were just like on my lunch break. I'm like, what do you think of this totally. and this? Yeah. It doesn't have to be your bridesmaid. Find someone else who just loves this stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> yeah. And now you know that girl ain't it. Yeah. She's not, <laughs> exactly. she's not it. She We've does. eliminated her from the short list. And maybe that is, that's true. If you want to do a little self reflecting, think about how people are responding to that and think about their personalities in general, even before your wedding. Who just seems like a person that would be into this sort of thing? Yeah. And clearly that person is not on the list <laughs> anymore. So that's all the confessionals. <laughs> and now that's we're it. into bridal breaks. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so bridal breaks for anyone who hasn't listened before are just suggestions we give not only to brides, but anyone who's helping to plan a wedding, fun things to do that have nothing to do with weddings, Mm -hmm. so that you can remain a normal human that doesn't just talk about napkins. (laughs) Exactly. Good callback. Hey, you like that? Mm -hmm. Boom. Pamela, Mm -hmm. you got a beverage? It's not your slushy? It's not my slushy. I don't know what episode I said the slushy, but it's there. I have no idea. I'll look. I won't. (laughs) Just listen. (laughs) Wait, um, real quick, just as a recap, because you can do it off the top of your head. How do you make that slushy? Bonus bridal break. It is vodka, mm-hmm. limeade, yeah. um, 7-Up, and Squirt. Just equal parts? Um, it's a big-ass bottle of vodka, a two-liter <laughs> bottle. It makes a lot. Two-liter bottle of 7-Up, two-liter bottle of Squirt, and three <gasps> limeade cans. Do you put this in a bucket? How many I put containers? it in, like, four containers. Wow. And then you freeze it, yeah. and it just makes this lovely slushy yummy so i'm sorry what's your bridal break for tonight sorry (laughs) 
<laughs> Tonight is something super sweet that probably I will only like. It's called the Nilla Wafer Martini. <laughs> I like that you're only suggesting things that you would drink. <laughs> It's because it's sweet, and I know you'll make a face. It's fine. I will. <laughs> um, I found it on um, Mix That Drink, um, and it is literally just amaretto and vanilla vodka, speaking of vodka. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's just those equal parts. And Over it, ice? Um, or shaky, shaky in a fun glass? Shaky, shaky, and then, you know, I would put dr- it in I fun... would drink one of those. Like an after-dinner drink? Yes. Like a yeah. sweet sweet little dessert drink yeah i like a little dessert cocktail i like it all right um angie what is your bridal break i just stumbled upon an instagram account that i've become a fan of and it's just like fun just nonsense but the the handle is comments by celebs and it's literally just screenshots of celebrity instagram comments like them commenting to each other on each other's pages or them like commenting to haters or just like (laughs) saying funny things to people who comment on their own pages so there's some good ones on here um and yeah it's my new it's my new find that's so fun too because it's like the inside of their brains and also sometimes i feel like especially if they're just commenting within stuff that's really when they're not really thinking because when they're posting their own stuff it's a little more curated a little bit yeah but Mm -hmm. responses sometimes are just well this is the one that how I discovered it. And can I say a bad word on this show? I oh, threw it yes. Okay. So Welcome. it was a screenshot of Cardi B. Yes. And um, it was like an, a throwback Thursday. She like posted an old photo and what this girl was like, stop playing girl, get back in the studio and record music again. And she had just had a baby like a month ago. Yeah. So she was like, um, get into it. Damn girl. Let my pussy heal first. <laughs> And I was like, that is, so that's like, I saw that a friend of mine sent me like that as like a picture and was like, this made me laugh out loud. And then I was like, what is this comments by celebrities? So that's how I discovered, I just that's saw hilarious. a screenshot of her oh comment, like, let my pussy heal first, girl. I remember um, <laughs> recently, I guess Chrissy Teigen is on vacation in Bali. Oh yes, I've been following her. Yeah, she's so fun. And somebody in her comments or whatever said like i feel like you've been on vacation forever Forever. and like one of the comments like underneath like one of her like fans or whatever just wrote bitches call maternity leave (laughs) (laughs) it's like yeah Yeah, she just got to do it somewhere nicer than where we all get to do it literally just had a baby yeah like what do you want her to do she's still working hard on that ig and that twitter handle damn yeah Um, so my um (laughs) That's fun. I like that. I like that too. Um, So my bridal break for the week is um, uh, Crazy Rich Asians. The movie just came out and I went to go see it and it was so fun. But the soundtrack is amazing. Some of it's in English. Some of it isn't. I don't fucking care. All of them are bops. I've been playing it (laughs) all weekend. Like I'm literally at this point singing along with songs. I don't even understand the language. It's like it's so much fun. I, I'm like learning it. It's so it's really a good time. The movie is so fun. Definitely go see it. And the music just takes it to the next level. So it is a good thing. I was playing it. I don't even know if you noticed. That's what was playing. When we were hanging. Yeah, out there was before. like a cover of a Madonna song. Yes. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. Whatever. I think it was in like Mandarin or something. It was yeah. super fun. Yeah. No, there's a bunch of fun. The, the whole the whole soundtrack is uh, is really fun. And there's a new. I think it's a newer Miguel song on there too. That was in the nice. like one of the party scenes. But yeah, I highly recommend it. So, um, Crazy Rich Asian soundtrack, which is available. I mean, obviously on Spotify, but everywhere. Yeah. And that is our bridal breaks. Angie, yes. you made it through the whole show. Thank you for having me. This was so fun. Yeah, thanks for telling thanks us about your run. super hot wedding. <laughs> yes, so hot. It was the hottest. Hottest wedding. And <laughs> now we're going to go to Miami and party with your brother. Where it's yeah. also very hot. Yeah. <laughs> Caliente. So um, p- plug the hell out of your podcast, man. Yeah, so I host a comedic parenting podcast called First Timers. And you can find us in iTunes, Stitcher, and various, you know, like wherever you listen to your podcast, guys. And um, every week we just tell stories of things that happened to you as a parent for the first time. We actually had Pam on as a guest and she talked yes. about the first time your kid had a crush. Swoon. Um, yes. So, My little love bug. Yeah. <laughs> we've done everything from, you know, first time your kid shit in the tub to first time you... <laughs> 
resented your husband, you know? We'll, we'll cover it all. So yeah, give it a listen if you're a parent or if you know a mom. It's super send fun. It to them. Yeah, and They're your hilarious. co-host is coming on the show soon. So, awesome, yeah. yeah. She's, she's very funny, so it'll be a good time. Right on. Well, thank you for being on the show. Now we're going to plug the shit out of our show. Okay, go we for it. We do it in the form do of it. a quiz. And Pam knows a new part of the quiz, and she's gonna she's gonna be I'm challenged. Gonna fail today. No, you're doing great. Okay. Um. So Pam, <laughs> if you want to learn more about our show, what website should you go to? Weddingconfessionals.com. Oh my God, Ruth is gonna knock over that champagne glass. She is. Um, <laughs> you can find us on social media. Where can you find us? You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And um, where can you find those links? You can find them on WeddingConfessionals.com. Um, we love to get your confessionals. They're always anonymous. There's three different ways you can send them. One is a email address. WeddingConfessionals at gmail.com. The phone number I'm going to do for you, Pam. 434-933-2663. 434-933-2663. We don't use your voice. We transcribe. And we change a name. Um, the other way that people <laughs> like to send us is um, to go to our website, which is weddingconfessionals.com. Hit on the tab that says tell us your secret. From there, it's a simple form. It's just a name and a little open box where you type in letters that tell us your drama and then you hit send. And um, so besides. Sorry, I thought the dog was going to jump, but she's I know, just licking your hand. Well, I'm a little nervous. She's going to jump. <laughs> she's insane. She just seems all into your fingers. Must be some leftover slushy on there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Proof, her little lush. Um, so, so we are available on Apple Podcast. In order for us to move up in their weird algorithm that we don't to this day understand, um, you're supposed to hit subscribe. And you're also supposed to give us a rating and a review. Um, well, how many stars do you want in the rating, Pam? I would love five. I'm going to agree with you today. Five stars. I don't want to fight. Perfect. Okay, cool. Um, so besides Apple Podcasts, which is the top of this list, we are on a lot of different podcast providers. Recently, I've put them in alphabetical order and to make you work a little harder. Um, let me get that list. So besides <laughs> Apple Podcasts, Pam, um, now in alphabetical order, and as soon as you don't get it, I will take over. What is the next one? Starts with a C. Um... Castbox. Yes. Next one. Castro. Yes. Next one. Um. Starts with a D. I don't know. Downcast. Downcast. Google, Google Play. You actually did worse than you did last time. I know. Pamela. Slushy. Apple Podcasts. Castbox. Castro. Downcast. Google Play. iHeartRadio. Overcast. Player FM. Pocket Cast. Podbean. Pod Paradise. Podtail, Pod Attic, Podcast Land, Podcast Republic, Radio Public, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, and YouTube. Woo! I didn't even know all of those existed. Yeah, they <laughs> all exist. And Pam's going to one day know them all in alphabetical order. Someday. One day. I have faith in you, girl. <laughs> and that is it. Angie, thank you yes. for being on the show. Thanks again for having yeah. me. It was so fun. Super fun. Pam, I'll see you next week. All right. Bye. Bye. Special thanks to Andy Schreier for our adorable theme song and to Ramsey Malay and Brian Maylard for their technical support, which we desperately needed. Want to make sure you don't miss a single episode? Subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, or SoundCloud and make sure to give us a five-star rating or give us a four if you're being judgy like us. If you have a crazy story to tell or need some advice, you can reach us by going to our website, weddingconfessionals.com. Or you can email us at weddingconfessionals at gmail.com. Or leave us a voice message at 434-933-2663. That's 434-933-2663. And as always, we will never reveal the names in order to protect the innocent and the annoyed. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're looking for those links, you can find those and more at our website, which you haven't figured out by now is weddingconfessionals.com. See you guys next time. Bye.